Adhikarna 6. Worship with and without symbols. Doubt. This is well established that any traveling is concerned with the conditioned Brahman and not with the supreme Brahman. Now the doubt is this. Does the superhuman being, Chandogya 4, 15, 6, lead to the world of Brahman all aspirants without exception who meditate on the conditioned Brahman? Or does he lead only some of them? What should be the conclusion here? Opponent, all these knowers of Brahman must reach a goal other than the supreme Brahman, for in the aphorism, the passage of the soul by the path of the gods is not restricted to certain meditations only. It applies to all. Sutra 3, 331. This path is promised equally for all the other meditations. Vedantin. To this comes the aphorist's rejoinder. Sutra 15. Atrati kalambana nayati ti bhagarayana ubhayata dosha tat kratushcha. He, nayati, leads aprakrita alambanan. Those who do not depend on symbols. Iti, this is what? Badarayanaha. Badarayana says, Adoshat, there being no contradiction. Ubhayata, on admitting this twofold division. Cha, and because of the logic of Tatranu, of becoming what one resolves. Translation. Badarayana says that the superhuman being leads to Brahman only those who do not use symbols in their meditation, since this twofold division involves no contradiction and one becomes what one resolves to be. The teacher Badarayana thinks that leaving out those who meditate with the help of symbols, the superhuman being leads all others who meditate on the conditioned Brahman to the world of Brahman itself, for it involves no contradiction to admit this twofold division, since the reasoning about non restriction cited above, Brahma Sutra 3 331, is applicable to all meditations that are not based on symbols. A confirming reason for this twofold division is found in the resolution for that. For it is but reasonable that one who resolves to be Brahman should get the divine glories of Brahman as it is stated in the text, one becomes just as one meditates on him. But one cannot have the belief of being one with Brahman when meditating with the help of symbols, since in such a meditation the symbol predominates. Opponent the Upanishad mentions that even without any resolve about Brahman, one can reach Brahman, as it is stated in the text, he leads them to Brahma. Chandogya 4.15.5 Heard of in connection with the meditation on the five fires, and not on Brahma. Vedanta Let this be so where a direct, specific declaration to the contrary is met with. But the aphorist thinks that in accordance with the logic of becoming what one wills to be, the general rule is that in the absence of any specific declaration, those meditators who entertain a resolution about Brahman alone reach Brahma. Sutra 16 Visheshaṁ chadarshayati cha and darshayati the Upanishad reveals Visheshaṁ, a speciality about results. Translation. And the Upanishad reveals a speciality about the results of meditations with symbols. Besides, the Upanishad shows with regard to the meditations based on such symbols as name, etc., that the succeeding ones have better results than the preceding ones in such passages as one who meditates upon a name as Brahman gets freedom of movement as far as name extends. Chandogya 715. The organ of speech is surely greater than a name. Chandogya 721. He gets freedom as far as speech extends. 
Chandogya 722. Mind is surely greater than speech. Chandogya 731. And so on. This distinction about results is possible for these meditations as they are dependent on symbols. But if they be based on Brahman, how can there be any gradation in the results, since Brahman is without such differences? Accordingly, the meditations based on the symbols cannot have the same result as the others based on Brahman. Namaste. So these are the last two sutras of the third pada of the fourth chapter of Brahma Sutra. And they clarify and also introduce new criteria into the question or the, the issue of either traveling and going to the inferior Brahman or not traveling and just dissolving into the superior Brahman, the unconditioned Brahman, at death. So the two classes of enlightened souls reach different destinations according to their realization. If they realize the conditioned Brahman they go there. Huh? According to the Upanishadic verse, as they meditate on Brahman, so they become in the next life. So in the Upanishads, many different meditations are given on Brahman. And they all involve adhyasa, superimposition. Uh, Brahman is the substrate, and then the meditation object is superimposed on it. And the object is meditated on as Brahman. Now, the second sutra, uh, the final sutra in the third pada, introduces this range of destinations or range of freedom of movement and action, depending on the meditation object. So, first of all, if you want to go to the unconditioned Brahman, you cannot use these symbolic meditations. You have to meditate on Brahman itself without any superimposition, without any symbol. The most common symbol is given in the Mandukya Upanishad, Aum. So those who meditate on Aum go to the secondary Brahman, not the primary Brahman. Those have to transcend all symbols and come to know Brahman directly in their own consciousness. And even those who reach the secondary Brahman have to know, at least theoretically, what the primary Brahman is. Because the primary Brahman is the background or context for the secondary Brahman. So to realize secondary Brahman properly, you have to understand what the primary is, what the context is. And then in the Chandok Upanishad, in the seventh discourse, the whole range of freedoms of the realized soul is given. This is so hard to talk about. I don't know why. But anyway, I went and looked up that context, and I'm going to explain it to you now. First, I'm going to read Shankaracharya's introduction to the seventh discourse. Chandokya Upanishad, Discourse 7, Philosophy of Name and Other Lower Things. Shankaracharya's Introduction Discourse 6 has been devoted mainly to expounding the highest truth, and it has been used to determine the unity of being, self. That teaching is meant for the disciples of the highest grade. It has not dealt with things lower than the being in the form of products, worldly things. And yet, an account of these also is needed for the disciple of the middle grade who is unable to grasp the highest truth. Hence, the seventh discourse now begins for the purpose of expounding just those things, beginning with name and ending with the all. 
and then through these step by step leading up to the highest truth under the name of the Bhuman, infinity. So what the seventh discourse does is it lays out this progression, this step-by-step -step movement, huh? the journey of the realized soul, and to see what level of realization it has. These are more distinctions hmm? beyond just, well, does he realize the primary or secondary Brahma, huh? which determines whether or not there will be a journey after death. But assuming there is going to be a journey and he is going to the relative conditioned Brahman, then there are still levels and ranges of freedom and realization. So now the seventh discourse is going to enumerate those. One, name. One who meditates upon name as Brahman becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of name. Two, Speech. One who meditates upon speech as Brahman becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of speech. Three, mind. One who meditates upon the mind as Brahman becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of the mind. Four, will. One who meditates upon will as Brahman, being himself lasting, well-established, and undistressed, attains respectively lasting, well-established, and undistressed regions determined for him and becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of the will. So these are a progression. One who meditates on Aum, for example, meditates on the name of Brahman. In fact, in Mandukya Upanishad, it's explained it's his favorite name. It's the name he likes the most and is most attractive to him. But still, one who meditates on Brahman in the form of name can only go to that sphere in which name is valid. He cannot go beyond name. Now, in our human state, <laughs> our intelligence is limited pretty much to the sphere of name. And we find it hard to even imagine what is beyond name. So he then goes to enumerate the higher standards or higher levels of realization beyond it. Five, intelligence. One who meditates upon intelligence as Brahman, being himself lasting, well-established, and undistressed, attains lasting, well-established, and undistressed regions prepared for him and becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of intelligence. 6. Contemplation One who meditates upon contemplation as Brahman becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of contemplation. 7. Learning One who meditates upon learning as Brahman attains the regions of learning and of knowledge, he becomes free to do as he wishes in the sphere within reach of learning. 8. Power. One who meditates upon power as Brahman becomes free to do as he wishes in the sphere within reach of power. 9. Food. One who meditates upon food as Brahman attains regions supplied with food and drink, and he is free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of food. 10. Water. One who meditates upon water as Brahman secures all desires and becomes satisfied. He becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of water. 11. Fire. One who meditates upon fire as Brahman, being resplendent himself, attains resplendent regions, full of light and free from darkness, and he becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of fire. Akash. One who meditates upon Akasha as Brahman attains extensive regions, full of light, free from pressure, and spacious, and he is free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of Akash. 13. Memory. One who meditates upon memory as Brahman becomes free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of memory. 14. Hope. 
One who meditates upon hope as Brahman, by hope do all his wishes prosper. His prayers become infallible, and he is free to act as he wishes in the sphere within reach of hope. 15. The true. When one understands the true, then alone does he declare the true. Without understanding the true, one does not declare the true. It is only when one understands the true that he declares the true. But this understanding itself one must seek to understand. 16. Reflection. When one reflects, then he understands. Without reflecting, one does not understand. One understands only when he has reflected. But reflection itself should be sought to be known. 17. Faith. When one has faith, then he reflects. Without faith, one does not reflect. One reflects only when he has faith. But one should seek to understand faith itself. 18. Service. When one serves, then one has faith. Without serving, one has no faith. It is only when one serves that he has faith. But service itself should be sought to be understood. 19. Action. When one acts, then alone does he serve. Without acting, one does not serve. Only on acting does one serve. But action itself should be sought to be understood. 20. Bliss. When one attains bliss, then he acts. Without attaining bliss, he does not act. Only on attaining bliss does one act. But bliss itself should be sought to be understood. 21. The infinite. That which is infinite is bliss. There is no bliss in what is finite. The infinite alone is bliss. But the infinite itself should be sought to be understood. Wherein one sees nothing else, hears nothing else, and understands nothing else, that is the infinite. Wherein one sees something else, hears something else, and understands something else, that is finite. That which is infinite is immortal. That which is finite is mortal. So this most beautiful, extensive, and appropriately complex meditation can bring one from the sphere of Brahma Vidya, that is, symbolic knowledge of Brahman, to actual realization of primary Brahman itself, step by step, improving, or I should say virtualizing the objects of meditation from name all the way up to the infinite. And of course, it should go without saying that one who realizes the infinite also has access to and complete freedom within all the lesser regions and stages of enlightenment. So this completes the third pada of the fourth chapter of Brahma Sutra. And after a break of a few days <laughs> to collect our thoughts and get ready, we'll embark upon the fourth pada, which describes the world of Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.